Did you know that almost all energy that we use originally came from the sun? It may seem counterintuitive, but even fossil fuels like coal, gasoline, and even diesel were created by plants long, long ago. So when you drive, you're being propelled forward by ancient sunlight. Wind and hydropower get their energy from the weather, but this is ultimately powered by the sun too. All of these energy sources are secondary or further steps away from the primary energy source, however, sunlight itself. So the only significant non-solar form of energy we have here on Earth is nuclear power. And not just in this form, but also geothermal energy in which 60 to 80% of the Earth's core heat is generated from atomic decay. There are two minor exceptions that make up a fraction of a percentage of the Earth's energy. First, tidal power that results from the interaction of the Moon's gravitational field and the initial rotational energy imparted on the Earth. Second, geothermal energy in its minor fraction. This is leftover energy from the Earth's formation and also the gravitational field crushing in on it that heats up the core of the Earth. So about 95% of all energy sources come from the sun, but only 1% of that comes from direct solar energy, or what you might think of as solar panels or solar farms. Ugh. More solar energy falls on the surface of the Earth in one hour than the entire human race uses in an entire year. And we can't let an opportunity like that pass us up. So we're gonna install a solar system to harness this energy and use it for something other than getting that perfect tan. Many homeowners and RVers like us have been using it for years. Solar photovoltaic arrays allow you to take all that power that falls on your roof each day and turn it into usable electricity. We've been using this power as our primary energy source for over two years now, as we dove in with a cost-effective, medium-sized solar system. We fell in love with the silent power generation and everything it allows us to do and how it allows us to live comfortably anywhere we go because we are the power plant. Today, however, we are gonna be rebuilding our electrical system, utilizing some of the latest tech to squeeze as much power off of this 33 foot long RV's roof and do some things with off-grid power that we'd never thought possible before. So join us today as we build our ultimate off-grid RV electrical system. We built our first solar system on this RV in 2017 and have since fallen in love with having solar as our primary energy source. It changed our lives for the better and has worked flawlessly as we've traveled the country. Since this is our home, however, and we mostly live off the grid, we've decided to upgrade the tech and push the limits of what we can do with solar on this 32-foot RV. Most of the components of the first install are being replaced as this time we build out our dream electrical system. Off-grid solar systems may seem complex, and the full schematic of this build will be available over on our website. But when you break it down, there are only a few major components. So what are we installing in our ultimate off-grid RV electrical system? Well, we're starting with what we consider the ultimate RV drop-in battery solution, the 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate Battleborn battery. At the heart of the system is the battery, which you can think of as a tank that stores energy for nighttime and cloudy day use. For our ultimate system, we were installing the largest battery bank that space and weight would allow in our RV, eight Battleborn batteries. Our first solar install in this RV reused a battery module from a wrecked Tesla Model S car, and as an electrical engineer it was a fun project, but required a complex and custom external battery management system to keep the battery safe. Whereas the Battleborn lithium batteries we are installing have all the protections built in and can be hooked up like regular batteries. Lithium ion batteries are a must for an ultimate off-grid system because they pack a lot of power in much less space and weight from traditional lead acid batteries. They also have much better discharge characteristics and much longer life with no maintenance required. 
And what's unique about lithium batteries in general is that because they don't have any acid in them, it needs to sit in basically like a bucket, like a lead acid battery has like a, a bucket of acid and it has to stay upright. These batteries can be mounted in any direction. They can be on their side, they can be upright, or in our case, we're actually gonna be mounting them upside down. We built custom aluminum racks for the batteries to be supported on upside down and notched out areas where the terminals were so that electrical connections could be made. We also insulated the aluminum near the battery terminals so that accidental grounding of the system would be minimized. While being able to install these batteries anywhere is a huge plus, what usually ends up happening is they get installed in places that are tight to work in, and I wasn't even sure that they all would fit. Five of these batteries came from a previous install we did for the Go North Expedition, and like this install, it was very tight. But once everything was in place, it looked really good, and the batteries are kept well out of the way. In our upside down install, this left plenty of space for additional components underneath the batteries. So while Tom is finishing the space for the inverter and the charge controllers and bus bars, I am working on the cable busing between the batteries. These little guys will go in between two 12 volt batteries to connect them and turn it into a 24 volt system. We wired the system in a 24 volt configuration. Our previous setup was 24 volts, so this was not a change for us. And we decided to stick with 24 volts because with the amount of solar that we were installing, this is about the lowest voltage we would want to run because it halves the current over a 12 volt setup, allowing us to use smaller wires, less charge controllers, and enjoy higher efficiencies overall. We wired the batteries using a combination of 1 gauge, 1 aught, and 4 aught cable depending on where the cables were installed, as current is cumulative in a battery pack. And by calculating the expected currents, we were able to work with smaller gauge cables in some tight spaces. So let's talk about the solar part of our ultimate solar system now. Before we had a little over 1100 watts of typical residential style glass solar panels on the roof. And now we're gonna be putting on these super rugged, super flexible stick-on solar panels. These panels are another reason that we're able to go with this new upgraded system because before we were only able to put so much solar on the roof for both space and weight. But these panels are so much lighter that we're going to be able to increase our capacity by about 1600 watts on the roof and still lose 70 pounds. We are super excited to be testing out these new panels from Battleborn Batteries. They've introduced a new line of Battleborn solar products, and these top of the line panels are the first of their offerings. These panels have some really neat tech in them that we're really excited to see how it performs. These panels are utilizing a very unique grid technology over the top of the cells and underneath the cells that puts over 2,000 points of contacts on each one of the cells. What this means is that even if the cell cracks, it sees very little to no power loss. Also, this is going to reduce thermal chemical stresses that could cause typical failures on traditional bus bar structures within solar cells. This grid structure also significantly reduces the series resistance internal to the cells, which is going to increase panel efficiency and also increase the performance in low and scattered light conditions. And we're gonna be really interested to test this out against traditional solar panels. For an off-grid solar system, the solar panels are the primary electrical generator, converting that sunlight into electricity. For this build, we first had to remove the old glass solar panels and seal up more than 100 holes from where the brackets were screwed down and also thoroughly clean the roof. I got some brand new solar panels to put on this roof. These Battleborn solar panels that we're using are rated at 230 watts apiece and come in two shapes and colors, specifically model numbers BB230A and B. Because these panels are flexible and stick down, installation is very easy and they remove leak points associated with screwing brackets into the RV roof. 
Once on the roof, firm pressure needs to be applied to the panels, and we did this using a towel to distribute our weight while pressing over the entire surface area. These panels are also very lightweight at only 12 pounds apiece, and are a big reason that we were able to put so much solar on this RV's roof and keep the installation very light. We installed 10 panels on the top of the RV for an installed capacity of 2300 watts, but we didn't stop there. So we have two more panels to go, and these ones are going on the front cap of the RV. With the flexibility of these panels, we figured that even the curved surface of the front of our fifth wheel's cap was fair game for panel installation. Installing panels here is not ideal for performance, but this is our ultimate dream system. So we're maxing out all available surface area, and we'll keep track of their performance compared to the rooftop install. With two people, the install went well, aside from being interrupted by a few tropical thunderstorms. Once the storms passed, the last panel was adhered to the RV, completing the additional 460 watts on the front. With the solar panels installed, we headed back to the basement to get the rest of the components installed that we would wire them to. So we got all the batteries wired up and they're just about ready to go, connecting to the additional components of the system. And this is where things can get a little tricky if we weren't creative enough in installing the batteries. Now we need to get creative again to install the components because in an RV, a boat, any mobile application, typically space is kind of tight. So we need to really be creative in how we line things up. So at this point, we got out all the different components and we're just laying them out to try to figure out where they're gonna go. Now, a lot of times the wires themselves are gonna dictate where things need to be installed because of how they have to bend and route. But you also have to consider spacing considerations and make sure that it is a safe electrical install. Here we have a decent amount of space, but because we have a large inverter and lots of components, things are still a bit tricky in here. So we're laying them out, drawing out where they might go on the backing board, and just figuring this puzzle out. And truthfully, I find it kind of fun. Solar panels cannot be connected directly to the batteries and need a special charge controller installed between them and the batteries. This is because the panel's power output will differ from what the batteries require for charging, and this device converts it to the appropriate level and optimizes solar panel efficiency. With our ultimate install having so much solar power, we needed three separate charge controllers to handle the load and make the system more efficient. Partial shading and different lighting conditions on some panels and not others, like we have on the front cap set, can negatively impact the performance of other panels on the same charge controller. But keeping them on their own controller prevents this and makes the system more efficient. With the charge controllers installed, we pulled six gauge wire to the roof and connected the panels to them using a special RV solar combiner box that allows for multiple solar circuits. The combiner box is mounted on the roof and allows solar panels to be connected in parallel within it. These panels are wired in a series parallel configuration, and our voltage coming off the panels is around 50 volts. Now that we've got the batteries and the bus bars installed, the next order of business oh, is installing the inverter. Now this is the biggest, heaviest piece of electrical equipment we're installing. It's basically a generator between the batteries and the AC system. The inverter converts battery and solar power into AC power just like in your home, so that we can run appliances, computers, and anything else that plugs in. For our ultimate system, we are installing a larger inverter, capable of 5,000 volt amps that can handle multiple large appliances at one time and even run the air conditioner. The inverter is connected both to the batteries and AC system and can convert power in both directions. The inverter is also a battery charger. It can take AC power from a short connection or generator and charge the batteries if it is ever needed. But this system is primarily designed to charge using solar. After installing the inverter, there were only a handful of components left to install. First, the DC to DC converter that changes the 24 volts of this battery bank to 12 volts that the RV's DC appliances and lights use. Lastly, we installed components that monitor the system and allow us to make changes to its performance remotely. A battery monitor is essential in an off-grid system, and we installed the BMV 712 as it gives an accurate reading of the state of charge of the batteries. 
For our ultimate system, we also installed a computer called the Octo GX that is designed to communicate with the inverter, solar charge controllers, and the battery monitor to wirelessly communicate system data with an online portal that allows us to see how the system is functioning on a phone or computer as it shows solar energy, battery state of charge, AC and DC power, and how it's all flowing. With 2,760 watts of solar installed on the roof, 11.2 thousand watt hours of usable battery, and the 5,000 volt amp inverter installed, the system was complete, and it was time to give it a road test, as we headed north from Florida to our off-grid property in Michigan, where we will really test out this system. So we've been operating the system for over a month now and things have been working great. We've traveled over 1700 miles with it and all the connections to the batteries and electronics have stayed tight and all the panels have stayed well adhered to the RV, which we're very happy about. We've also been able to use multiple large appliances because of that larger inverter. We've been able to run hair dryers, microwaves, cooking appliances, and we've even run the air conditioner a bit on hot sunny days without feeling like we're gonna overload the system. So it really feels like we're just plugged into shore power all the time, even while traveling, which is exactly what we wanted. We've also loved having the system online so that we can see what's going on with it. So this is the Victron VRM portal. This is what allows us to log into that computer that we installed remotely from anywhere in the world over the internet and see how the system is performing real time. This is also really neat because it allows us to make programming changes to the system and we're gonna be using that functionality later. It also allows us to look at past data and we've been able to see that the system's typically been generated around 16 to 1800 watts continuous with peaks upwards of 2300 watts. Now we are not done testing and playing with this system and the data from this Victron VRM portal we're really gonna be analyzing and sharing over on our website on the accompanying articles and in future videos. So if you're a data guy like me, you're gonna wanna check that out if you're into that kind of thing. So there you go, our ultimate solar off-grid electrical system. And we have been stoked with how it's been performing. We've been generating around 14 to 15,000 watt hours of power per day. And to think that it's all generated from really the small surface area of this RV's roof is incredible. So to think about how much power falls on the ground around us is really awesome. Now this system may be overkill for most RVers, but for us, we live off grid most of the time. And to feel like we're hooked up all the time just from the power of the sun is really awesome. We come up here to this property regularly and decided not to pull power from the road. And if you're in a similar situation, it might make sense to invest in solar and batteries instead of the grid. Now, even for us, this system makes more energy than we need for our daily tasks. And once the batteries are full, any of that extra power that lands on the roof basically goes unused. So you're gonna to wanna to join us for our next videos and learn what we do to optimize this system and use that extra power. Thank you so much for joining us on our solar journey and we will see you next time.